The following is brought to you by House Call Pro. Check out the link in the summary after the video for your free trial. Okay, so we have a CompuAir here that has a low pressure alarm on the second compressor. Now we have to verify if there actually is low pressure or if it's an issue with the pressure switch or maybe the controller, the hardware inside the machine. Um, we're gonna use a couple tools to figure this out. We're gonna stick the Testos on there, the 557s to verify pressure. Then if we have to leak check, we have the Testo 316-3, which is an incredible leak detector. So let's get this done, guys. Okay, gauges are hooked up. We have zero pressure in the system. So we're gonna have to get some nitrogen, the big blue, pressurize this thing up and try to figure out where the, the leak is coming from. So I did pull out the big blue and I gotta say I'm not gonna get to use it this time because my HVAC six cents kind of kicked in here. See we got all this oil around this. Um, this is a, a water regulator. This is a um, pressure regulator on the water side of the system. It's water cooled so you have water flow through here. Refrigerant pressure through this cap tube um, that maintains pressure of, of the, uh, the, the system on the high side. But what I found was we had a bit of a rub through. Let's see if I can get a, a good shot of that. So right here, right here, this cap tube, I don't know if you can hear that, that cap tube rubbed through and um, caused the leak. So we can fix that up. And this is a server room, guys. So what we gotta do here is fix that up in a way where it's not gonna leak again. And I do not like firing torches in a server room for many reasons because it's not ventilated, it's a sealed room. So any fumes in here, you're gonna continue to breathe in and so is the people working in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some Smart Seal external on that leak. Another test for it, get it all tested out, and I guarantee you it's gonna solve the problem we got here. Okay, so we have this Smart Seal external in here. We're gonna cut off what we need with a knife. Okay, and I'm using my Testo case as a uh, little bit of a workbench here because I don't really have much to work on in this room. Uh, then when we cut what we need off, we kind of knead it with our fingers till it becomes a uniform color. As you can see, it's two different colors. There's a light gray and a, and a dark gray. Um, we knead it till it's the same color. Then we wrap it around the pipe or the capillary line, which I've already cleaned up. Then once we wrap it, we pinch it on either side to create a seal. Then we gotta let it cure. Okay, pull a vacuum, charge it up. Okay, it's kinda of dark in here, but I've got the external wrapped around the pipe and pinched on either end pretty good uh, to seal that up. Now that avoids me from lighting a torch in this room. Like I said, lighting a torch in here, it's not ventilated. Any fumes I create, I'm gonna breathe in continuously while it circulates in the room. So this avoids that and it's gonna create a seal on that cap line. Okay, we've been under pressure test for a little bit now and uh, I've soaked all of this. And we have absolutely no bubbles. So let's go check on our pressure test, on our timed uh, pressure test on the Testos. Okay, so we're 11 minutes in to the pressure test. We have not budged. We have no soap bubbles. I'm gonna say that I'm pretty confident we're good to go here. So we're gonna hook up the True Blue hoses and we're gonna hook up the 2CFM NAVAC battery operated pump. And we're gonna see how fast we can pull a vacuum on this baby. Okay, I've got the kit all set up, the True Blue hoses, the Blue Vac Plus Professional, and the NAVAC 2CFM battery operated pump. We're gonna to link to the app. We're gonna pull a vacuum on this five ton circuit. See how well we do. Okay, so on this older unit, we pulled down to 410 microns in about 48 minutes. Okay, with the uh, two CFM vacuum pump. Now, if we use one of NAVAC six or eight CFM vacuum pumps, 
just imagine how quick we'd be with this setup but I didn't want to bring up a cord and I just let this run while I was doing some maintenance and uh, this is the result here we're gonna charge this thing up and get it running okay we got the charge weighed in exactly there's a scale in the tank right there what I'm probably gonna do is adjust the TX valve fine-tune this a little bit better but the charge is weighed in we got a clear sight glass in there we are cooling we're cooling nicely we got a sweating evaporator what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the electronic leak detector the testo and give one last test to the external the AC smart seal external just to make sure we're all good there that's it guys Okay guys, so one last test, and this is the uh, the five minutes it takes to be a better tech. I'm gonna take my leak detector. Okay, this thing is completely badass at finding leaks, so if it tells me there's no leak here, I'm gonna trust it. So the smart seal external, we're gonna hit it up with the leak detector. So it looks like we're good there guys. Leak repaired, evacuation charge, good to go, happy HVACing. Okay, that was a pretty unique repair we did there. I haven't used that stuff on a cap line before and that's a very, very good application for it. Like I said, I didn't want to light a torch in that room, no ventilation, any, any gases, any fumes, any fusion that was created from the vapor boiling off, the uh, compressor oil would have stayed in that room. It would have been it would have been there I'd be breathing it in I avoided that by using the external pull the vacuum with the 2 CFM um, took about 48 minutes um, it would have went a lot faster if I used a bigger pump but I don't want to bring out a cord and try to find power so that's how I did it and, and it worked out really well and just so you guys know I didn't change the dryer because the leak happened about 12 hours prior there was an alarm on the unit and when I put my gauges on you could actually see the vapor still boiling off um, out of the compressor oil and leaving the hose. So it was still under that slight positive. So air and moisture didn't actually have a chance to get in and penetrate the system. I've changed pressure switches like that, um, all kinds of different things I've changed like that. And you don't even have to pull a vacuum when, when you do that. I did this time just to be safe, but that's why I didn't change the dryer because that might've been a question that you guys might've asked. Anyway, happy HVACing.